Hey, it's Todd Gross with a long overdue warning about using YouTube as your primary source for video hosting and a really cool solution. You've probably noticed already that very few big marketers use YouTube or even YouTube players on their main websites. The Talking Head videos, the Video Maker FX videos, their Doodle videos, they're not ending up on YouTube. And there's a great reason for that. The big guys know that YouTube isn't so great for business after all. Did you know that hosting your videos on YouTube is dangerous because they can actually turn visitors away from your video just based on the video's view count? Or how about this? All those suggested videos that pop up all over the place. Ever wonder about those? Yeah, they're serving as a vehicle to reach other people's videos. That can't be helpful for you. Then there are the comments, and I only thought of this recently. Just one negative comment about your video could destroy your credibility and deter your video's viewers from taking action. Get your account shut down as well, and then you could also run into copyright issues. It just goes on and on. Now, don't get me wrong. YouTube does have its place when it comes to search engine optimization, especially if you know what you're doing, and Hangouts. But building your business on it and using it as your primary source for hosting videos? Just ask the three little pigs how well that turned out for them when they built their house of straw. Poof! So what's the solution? Well, self-hosting your own videos with Amazon S3. But wait, S3 is complicated and expensive, right? Well, not so fast because I'm going to show you a way that you can do it very easily. Everyone should be hosting on S3, first of all. It's lightning fast, unlimited hosting that literally costs fractions of a penny. But that's just the hosting part. You will need a video player and instructions on how to get S3 set up very quickly. Now, a video player that gives you flexible functions, a range of options that really make your videos stand out among the rest, just like the one I'm using right now, in fact. And we've called it Video Marketing Publisher. It's part of the Easy Web Video family, which is the original video player that preceded all of the others. As you'll see in the demonstrations right there below, the options that this player offers are above and beyond. This is no toy video player. It's not a WordPress plugin, no. Now, it's not a cheap video overlay either. This is the real deal, just what the big boys use, but at a fraction of the price. It works in two parts. There's the software, which works on both Mac and Windows. Now, it's where you upload your video file. You choose between all the different cool video skins, different colors, the video sizes, the quality, and much more. But there's another dimension, in that you can make your videos extremely interactive. We're talking about adding clickable captions, clickable images, and even functioning email forms right in your video. Remember how difficult this was to do on YouTube? Not anymore. Video Marketing Publisher makes this so easy. The second part is after you upload your customized video to the internet. That's where Video Marketing Publisher's web interface comes into play, where you could grab your video's code, make additional edits if you need, and more importantly, post to Facebook. Now that post to Facebook feature is only available with the Video Marketing Publisher social option. But wow, it's totally worth it for just a few extra dollars that we're charging. The social option allows you to post your new videos to Facebook, but get this. All of the interactive functions, the clickable buttons, the email forms, all of it, it stays with the video. So even when someone shares your video, it carries right over from newsfeed to newsfeed including having the video actually stop dead in its tracks right there in the newsfeed until somebody opts into your mail list or shares the video with their friends. It can do that. You can see all of this, as a matter of fact, firsthand in those demos below. The first demo shows everything you get if you choose the video marketing publisher as a standalone video player. And demonstration number two shows the extremely powerful social add-on that I just mentioned for Facebook that's available for just a few dollars more. Now, Video Marketing Publisher is being introduced at a special price, which will be going up shortly, so grab it now. It's so much for so little. Enjoy it. 
So here we are inside the software after you've downloaded it onto your computer and you've set up your S3 so the videos will upload directly there. And remember the advantage was that the software being on your desktop will compress the video file and make it faster to upload to the web. So let's get started. The first step is we need to get a video. So I'll hit the tab here, it says select source video and that'll take me to a folder where I've got my videos and I'm going to grab this one here of me inner tubing down the Saugeen River. And I can hit play to make sure that's the video that I want. And then right here we start off with step number one. What do I want the actual video player to be? And you can see that we've got all these different sizes here, but after you've uploaded the video into your account, you can resize it in your online account. So don't get too worried if it's not exactly what you're looking for. For my blog, I usually do 512 by 288. Next thing is advanced settings. And these are already preset, but you just wanna make sure the video has stretch to fit. Bit rate, you can pick whatever you want, but this is crucial, H.264 Kodak. And what that means is this video will now play on all Apple devices and mobile phones and all that stuff. So that's crucial, but it's already been pre-selected for you. So I'm gonna close that down, and now we're gonna create the web video. So I hit the big red button, and now this video is being compressed and rendered. And now that our video has been rendered, here it is here. And now you get to pick your player skin. So it says here, number two, player settings, skin. And that's a drop down menu. And there's eight different players here that you can select from. You can change the colors. So you can just mess around with that. I like player number six. Start action. What do you want the video to do when somebody lands on the page? I usually set it for load, but maybe it's a sales page video where you want it to autoplay. What do you want the video to do when it stops playing? It can pause, it can start playing again. So it's just a matter of you messing around and figuring out what you like best. Uh, show the embed code. This is powerful here, social media buttons. Notice when I hover over the player, I've got Facebook, LinkedIn, you can email it and Twitter. And if you don't want that, you can select that as well. But I usually leave it on. And if I put a URL in this box here, when the video stops playing, it will actually open up another browser or actually open up within that browser. And if I select this tab, it will open up another browser separately. So that's pretty cool when you want to send people to maybe uh, an opt-in page or something, but really cool feature. Now here's where it gets fun. If you want to add a logo, we hit that tab and I just have to go onto my hard drive and find a, an image here. Let's say money back guarantee. Let's pretend that's my logo. And I can drag this anywhere I want within the video. I can resize it, make it smaller. And then here on the left, notice this transparency bar. When I pull it to the left, notice how that logo starts fading. So I can create that into a watermark. And then if I want, if I put a link here, that will be a clickable link within the video. Now just keep in mind, when you use a logo, that will be there for the entire video. So let me just delete that. Next, if I want to add a label. So a label is, see this? It's a text call to action. And I just drag these controllers here on the video timeline for where I want that thing to appear and disappear. So right now I've got it set to come in at the 16 second mark, disappear at the 24 second mark. And I would just enter text here. Um, you now get my free report now. And I can highlight that text and I can make it bigger. Oh, let's say I take it down to 22, make it bold. I can drag this wherever I want within the video. And then if I put a link here where it says link, that bubble will now become a clickable hyperlink within the video. That's pretty cool too. So you would just put in a link and then hit apply and then that thing will be live. So let's get out of here. I'm gonna delete that label. I can also add an image. See where it says here, new image? Same thing, I can jump onto my computer where I've got all my images and maybe I've got something here like a, oh, buy now. Let's put that in there. And same thing, I can drag this anywhere I want within the video. I can resize it by holding down the little, oops. Yeah, there we go, holding down the little bars there. Drag this wherever I want. And same thing, I just set a point on the video timeline where I want it to appear and then disappear. And then I would put a link here. So in this case, it's a PayPal buy button. So obviously within the link down here, I'd want it to go to my PayPal uh, sales page. And if I don't want that image now, I can just delete image. And here's where it gets really cool. I can add an email form. And same thing, I can size this by holding down the corner, pulling it around, and I set a point for when I want it to appear and disappear. And it's tied in right now with, if I hit the drop down menu, 
AWeber, Infusionsoft, MailChimp, and one shopping cart. So these are the four that are programmed into the software. But once you've uploaded this video into your account, let's say you're using Constant Contact or um, a different provider, you can use anyone that you want online. So once the video is in your account, you just have to copy and paste the form code. But these are the four that are programmed into the software. But don't get too hung up over the fact that maybe you're using one that isn't here because once the video is in your account, you can use any third-party autoresponder to do lead capture. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to delete that form for now. And now that I'm ready to publish this video, I hit the big red button that says publish. And now as you can see, this video is being uploaded to your account in Amazon S3. And now we get this message here saying that the video has been successfully uploaded. And what you can do is just copy this embed code and that's what you can put into your blog or web page now to make the video player appear. Or if we click the tab that says here, that will take us into our account. So I'm gonna click that and let's jump into your online account on S3. So here we are inside my account on S3 and yours would look very similar. And here's our video. And if I hit play to preview it, see our videos playing. And there's our call to action button that we put in. And if I click that, that will take me to a sales page because I put the corresponding URL. Now here on the right hand side, I just want to point out a few things. Notice it says current player. It says I'm using number six and it's black. Well, if I hit the drop down menu here that says change, you'll notice that I've got 11 different players that I can choose from. So now if I want to change this video player and the color and the skins, I don't have to put it through the software. I can now do it within my account because it's already been uploaded here. The other thing too is remember we could do a redirect at the end of the video. Well, I didn't do one in the software, but now the video's in my account. All I need to do is add a URL here, and now this video will redirect. So let's take a look at some of the other goodies here on the right-hand side. I'm just gonna scroll the page down. And notice the width and height. Remember on the software side, I said, don't be too concerned if you wanted to resize the video because there were only certain uh, parameters that were saved on the software. Now that the video is in your account, I can easily go in here and change the width and the height. Well, maybe I don't know the height, but all I need to do is change the width. Let's say I want to make it, oh, I don't know, 720 by, and if I've got this box checked that says maintain aspect ratio, as soon as I hit the tab, let me scroll back up here so you can see the video. Notice it changed the video size. So I don't have to know the height. As long as I have this box checked, it will automatically reformat that video to the right width and height. So let's go back to 512. And again, watch, I'll hit the tab and it automatically makes it to 88, which is the 16 by nine aspect ratio. So let me just uh, scroll down here a bit further. And this is what you need. This bit of code right here where it says your video code, that's what you would copy and then paste into your uh, blog or onto your web page to make the video appear. Now, let me just scroll down a bit further here. There's some other goodies that uh, you need to see. And right down here, we've got a video light box feature that you can use. And also this link right here that says web page URL. If you copy that, it will open up the video. Actually, let me just copy it and I'll show you. So I'm going to copy that link. And then I'm going to open up a separate browser. So that link is actually to a mini web page that you can now send as an email. So I can put that link into an email, send it, and when somebody clicks it, this is what they'll get. So that's kind of a cool feature too. Now I know I may be going kind of quickly here, but don't despair. Right here in the top right hand corner, you see this tab that says how to. Let me just click that and it opens up a whole library of video tutorials that will walk you through every single feature that this software and your account has. So this will really help you. If you have questions, check here because chances are we've created a video that will answer that question. So let's jump back to the video. Now notice up here this number, that number came from my uh, folder on my computer because I didn't name the video. Now for SEO purposes, obviously you want to name your video. So all I would need to do is click this pencil and now where it says edit video title, I can change that number and put in a title. And so there's my new title, it says Michael on the Saugeen River, I'll hit save. And it says it's been saved, so let's just close that down. 
And then notice up here at top, it says Michael on the Saugeen River. So another feature, and this is the big one. This is the one that I absolutely love that you guys will too. It's the post to Facebook. So see this tab that says post to Facebook? So I'm going to click that right now. So here you can see I've put in a title, I've put in a description, and then I want to hit the tab here that says post to Facebook. So let's do that. So this Facebook box now opens and I have to repeat something where it says say something about this. And this is just a Facebook thing, so I have to put something in. And so I've entered that. And now bottom right hand corner, you can't see it in the screen, but there's a big blue button that says post to Facebook. So I'm going to click that button and this dialog box opens up and it says alert your video has been posted to Facebook so let's jump over to my Facebook account so you can see the video so here we are in Facebook on my wall there's our thumbnail there's our description and let's click the video and I'm going to hit play And notice there's our event that came up, that link. And this time, let's click it and see what happens. And as you can see, when I click it, it took me to the sales page where I wanted it to go. So let's go back into our account. And we'll just have to hit OK. And so there you go. Now, another really powerful marketing feature is this tab here that says Add Facebook Requirement. So I'm going to click that. And then this dialog box opens up. Now what this Facebook requirement does, we have to make an assumption here, actually two assumptions. Number one is that the content you created, this video, is compelling enough that when it stops playing, that people will want the rest of the information that's in there. Because what this will do, you can set a time point for where the video will stop and this box will appear. Watch when I hit this tab that says add Facebook share. So this box appears, notice this, and I can resize this over top of the video player, you know, wherever I want. I can cover up the whole video if I choose. Make sure you don't cover the controller. But what this is going to do, again, it's under the premise that your video is good, high quality content, and they're going to want the rest. So what I can do, you know, in this case, the video is a minute long, but I'm just going to drag this controller here just for the purposes of the demonstration. And let's say 12 seconds. The 12 seconds the video will stop, this box will appear, and they're going to have to share this, which means it'll appear on their Facebook wall, where they can't watch the rest of the content. So a really powerful tool. But again, remember, your video's got to be compelling enough that they want to share it. Now, the other thing is, you, as I said, you can change the color, you can change the font. And if I'm happy with this, I would just hit Save Changes. Or see this one here that says Save as a New Video? If I click this tab... It will now give me the, the ability to put a new title in here. So in essence, I've created a whole new video. The initial video doesn't have this Facebook requirement. The new video will. And again, it will generate a new embed code that I would use to put on my site if I wanted to do that or on my blog or wherever else I wanted to appear. So this is a really powerful, powerful way to get your video shared on Facebook. Now, one thing I should point out, remember back over here when we were changing the size of the video and the players? Uh, let me just scroll down here a bit. This code, which is your video code, let's pretend that your video has been already posted. Maybe you put it on your blog or you've got it on a web page. Then you come in here and you decide, you know what, I want to change the video skin or the color or the size. So what will happen is it will generate a brand new code. So this here will generate a brand new code. And what that means is anywhere that you've put the video previously, when you make these changes, it will not affect that video that's been posted anywhere else. In essence, it's almost like you're creating a brand new video. So just keep that in mind that whatever changes you make here in, in your account will not affect any of the videos that you've posted anywhere else. Now, speaking of account, since this is Amazon S3, and if you're familiar with buckets and all that kind of stuff, let me show you your video account and how simple it is with the interface that we've created here. So I'm gonna to go to the top of the page and hit my videos. So here you can see I've got a bunch of videos already uh, uploaded. And across here at the top, I've got a tab that says my videos, news, whatever's current. Uh, your account will show your bandwidth and your usage, changing your password, downloading the software for PC or Mac. And But this is where it gets really interesting. Let me just scroll down here. 
So in Amazon S3, everything's in a really confusing bucket. You need to know numbers. What we've done is created this visual interface, which frankly is really gorgeous. You can see everything here are just thumbnail images. But let's say I'm doing a membership site and I want to create a project. Well, notice here I've got a folder. It says pre-post and here's a number. It shows me I've already got 12 videos. Well, so what I can do, let's say I want to add this video to that folder. So notice here it says add, that little plus sign. So if I click this, it will now give me the ability to add it to an existing folder. So here's the drop down menu. In this case, I've only got that one folder pre or post, or I can create a brand new folder. See where it says new folder? And I can call it, oh, let's say, well, new folder. And I hit save. And notice that video is gone and here's the new folder. And if I click the new folder, there's our video inside. So this is a really robust program. It's got a lot of features and functionality, but the important thing, I've got to stress it, the important thing is we've kept it simple for you to use. Mm -hmm.